Hey guys, and welcome to What's Up Jude. Hello guys. Hi guys. And welcome back to another episode of What's Up Jude. So before continuing this podcast, we have a special guest in today's episode, and she's a friend of mine, and I'm very happy to introduce her. So welcome, Elisa. We're super Hello. happy to have you here. And thank you for being he- for being here because we know that you are busy these days. So <laughs> can you introduce yourself maybe to our listeners? Tell us what you do, what you like, and how you've been these days. Um, sure. So I'm Lisa. I'm 19 years old. I'm French and Argentinian, and I'm currently studying in London at UCL. Uh, I'm studying a very weird degree that um, <laughs> basically lets you uh, choose a bit what you want to study. Uh, and some of the things I study include social sciences, uh, Mandarin, and uh, what else? Yeah, globally does that. Um, what I like doing, I like talking about deep stuff, <laughs> uh, <laughs> listening to music, uh, learning languages. Um, yeah, that's some of the things. I don't know, should I say anything else? No, I don't know if you me. have anything to say, you can say it, but if not, no, um, <laughs> you're, you're oh, free. Traveling, traveling's, tra- traveling's another thing I really like. Oh. Um, but uh, fair to say that it's not really been happening recently. Mm. But um, yeah, of course, <laughs> because of the pandemic. So yeah, Leslie, would you like to introduce our topic for today? Yeah. So today's episode is about personal growth through experiences. Uh, we knew that Elisa has been through a lot. Uh, yeah. met, met different people and would find it uh, very cool you know to share uh, to share everything with you so let's begin uh, Elisa how would you define personal growth um wow I feel like this is an essay question okay that's a difficult one um I'd say personal growth is when you think back on the past and like the different experiences you've like experienced um and and i like learning from it um and so so personally it's kind of looking back at at things and how they've shaped me or impacted me and uh and also looking at the future and deciding like what do you want to do who do you want to be and what kind of experiences do you need in order to become Mm -hmm. that person or like and working towards it so that would be my definition of personal growth that is a very deep one let's see what what would be your definition about personal growth um so in my opinion personal growth is more uh improving yourself and developing your skills and your individual part, not uh, such as, you know, like a sister or a friend, but just as you. And there are different ways to to know this kind of growth, uh, such as like taking care of yourself, or I think be out of the box can help a lot also. And yeah, what about you, Alex? I would say the same, like really reflecting on your inner self. And I think personal growth is something that is powerful, but at the same time, very fragile. And that is what the, that is what makes the true beauty of it, you know, mm-hmm. because personal growth, you have in order to, as Elisa said, to become that person, you need to travel through that path. And on that path, there will be difficult times. Um, and yeah, that, that will be my definition of it. Yeah. All right. 
Like Ellie, so we know that you traveled everywhere and we have a... Everywhere, that's a big word. Hopefully Guys, everywhere. Guys, she's, she's been in Asia. She's been in the United States. She's been in the South America. She's been everywhere. Like, And how, how, how old are you, Elisa? 19. She's freaking 19. <laughs> like what? So, okay, you told us uh, that you did a school trip in the US and also in China. So is there any difference between these two experiences that you lived? And for example, because of the total different mentality of the people and what they have brought you um, academically and also in your human life? Yeah, that's a very interesting question. Um, th there are quite a few big differences. Um, I guess the first one, I, so I went to the US first and I was quite young and it was my big, my first big trip, uh, like school trip without my family. Uh, and that was not like, I don't know, going to England. So, um, uh, And something specific was you, I would live with fam a, a family for a couple of weeks. Actually, yeah. I lived with um, two different families. Uh, so that was interesting because I could compare kind of how they live. Um, whereas in China, it was more, uh, we were living in a university, on a university campus, which oh. was also very interesting because we Tell got to meet it. the students. So, um, That was really that was really cool because we got to meet um, actual you know, Chinese university students uh, and uh, play sports with them, like on the university campus. Uh, they also had kind of like dancing classes, like uh, and they played a lot of <laughs> basketball and ping pong. They were just so good at ping pong uh, and just something like we went swimming and so little cultural differences, like. Um, when you get changed, everyone, you know, gets naked uh, without yeah. problem. Like there's no, there's no individual, um, like changing room. It's a yeah. common changing room, and it's very normal. Um, so that was really uh, fun to notice. Uh, also, just you know, minor changes in uh, the food, like having you know rice and a full meal at breakfast, but like rice. I actually really, really like that and. Uh, another thing was that you couldn't drink the water um, there. You could barely brush your your teeth with it because the the water was like yellow. So oh. you really, really couldn't really? Pull, um, no, you couldn't at all um, drink it. So and then another thing was um, when doing sports like going running, you couldn't run more than like one or two um how do you call that in a, in a circle stadium like they, in a yeah, stadium yeah, yeah. Uh, because the fog the, the pollution was just so bad that you uh would have trouble kind of breathing so Whoa. so yeah yeah i had i had a few friends who were like really good at sports and they just were so shocked they were like i can't do more really um, because of yeah. the bad air condition mm -hmm. there Yeah, that's whoa. Yeah, uh, but yeah, there's a little, we're just like some some differences that now that I think back on it, like almost six was it six years later because this was in 2015. Um, so it's like the, the the little things that really like 2015. Um, so yeah, um, and then I kind of lost track of the question now because um, uh, the question was okay, go on. Leslie, the question uh, was about about uh, the different mentality between U.S. and uh, China. And yes, yeah. So, and and what it brought me personally, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I guess so. It's hard to really compare because, as I said, in one I was with a family, and in another one I was more like in a university. So, it wasn't exactly the same, but. Um, definitely there was a lot of curiosity when I was in China about us and from our part to towards them um, 
but I guess something that was a bit limiting was sometimes the language because obviously we weren't very good at uh, Chinese and they spoke a bit of English, but that was kind of a barrier. Um, whereas in the US, uh, something that I really noticed was everything was just, the proportions of everything mm. were just huge, you know, and that's something you hear like from food, but also like the cars, the houses. Mm. And I must say, I was in a very privileged kind of school and area and the people there had kind of so, means yeah. and everything, but um, still like minor things, like how much kind of food they would cook and then that they wouldn't necessarily eat uh. or like, uh, leaving lights on but anyways the goal is not to it's just like minor things and then mm. the school system uh, that I found really great that uh, this it, the student teacher relationship was very different from the French one where in France the teacher teaches you and you just maybe ask questions at the end of the class but it's very much you know you take notes of what's written on the on the board and you Whereas in the US, you are expected to discuss everything. So maybe in a sense, it's more like university um, or I, I'm not really sure how university is in France, but, um, but, and we're talking like for 14 years old and you have a history class and uh, you know, the, the teacher comes in and he's like, okay, topic is, uh, I don't know, World War II, but he gives a few elements, but he's going to, have people discuss it and start from what they know so what do you guys know yeah and and that led people to be really confident i really saw the difference and in confidence and, do you think yeah. that this experience really shaped you as a you know human being and the the way that now you are more confident than maybe yeah. if you have if you haven't been if you hadn't, sorry, been to the US, maybe you wouldn't have been the same as right now. Like, mm. I know that you are in the university in England, so that is very completely different from our system. And like, do you think these, these experiences had a real impact on, especially your, your life choices, for example, decided, deciding, sorry, to go abroad to study and not staying in France? Yeah, I think definitely, you definitely hit the nail on the head, as they say here. Um, but um, yes, I think so, because from, from witnessing how a different school system is, and it was the same in Australia, where I said a bit longer, uh, it kind of made me realize the strengths of the, our education system in France, but also the limitations and it made me think, well, you know, what kind of education would I like? Um, it also led me to try to be more confident, both, both in my English, uh, but also uh, when discussing ideas, I used to be, to think a lot in my head, like in a conversation and let other people, you know, Talk. speak. And, yeah. And, and, and I, I, you know, I wouldn't necessarily, Kind of come in and be like so I think and it's still a bit difficult for me but when I saw uh particularly yeah in the in the US and Australia how people would just you know sometimes sometimes even cut off the other people I'm not saying this is what you should do but yeah it's really and people would also you know challenge the teacher and that was something not in a mean way in a completely respectful one but be like you know I think you know, or you know, like what, if we, that, what do you think about this and mm, exactly and and the relationship was um yeah the, the teachers would not it's not because they're teacher that they're superior or they're they know more like they would accept that you know oh I, I don't know about that and the student can maybe like even like teach them something that's um, so interesting yeah so yeah so because that's a, sorry go ahead <laughs> I was saying that just uh, here in France, we like teachers tend to, you know, be very strict and just continue to do the same every year without even wondering if uh, it's good or not for students. 
And so, yeah. also without wondering how the world among us, not among us, but you know, that is our environment is changing this way or that way. Like they don't take any of the external factors in account. So, and pandemic. I think, <laughs> and like the, pan like the pandemic, like, especially the pandemic. Yeah. So that is very interesting what you were saying about how these experiences in Australia, the US and China really shaped you and yeah bring you brought you confidence because i think like in france we i'm not talking for everyone of course we have trouble um growing like growing and as a as an individual because of our edu educational system as you say mm -hmm. because that is the basis the base i don't know how to say this word yeah, the of the base of how we're going to be in the future yeah right. and i think like there is a very specific way of how you should think for example with um essay uh like dissertation <laughs> <laughs> um and you have just almost one or two way two ways to 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 follow. think yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and yeah. that's it you can't you can't just uh, share uh your experiences and just talk about it and how it relates to the question you you can't you can't do that and lastly like do you have any experiences that really shaped you as a new as a human being and <laughs> what <laughs> okay you know you know which one i know uh... but you know tell us tell us uh yeah i don't have a very specific moment who shaped me but okay I just don't like driving like I hate that and I hate to uh, well I hate being in a car or a bus uh I don't know why just I hate it so when I passed my driver license I was so relieved and I think that you know I can say that it's um it was one of the part of my personal growth because uh, you know like I, I can I can I can do some something that I don't really like so and that I was scared also so yeah I think that's it like I think for some people driving is you know something really cool but the way that you um I don't know appropriate this experience yeah. is very different like i've never i've never talked about <clears throat> about driving being scared of driving with anyone because usually people like driving so yeah yeah and i uh, i think people just don't understand what i say i am scared but i i i see the car as a weapon mm. and sometimes and so i was scared of being in a car and suddenly i had to drive myself mm. so it was like what and yeah i think that's that shaped me and uh, ellie we have a sorry i'm calling you ellie you know guys this is my friend so <laughs> like i don't like to call her elisa so anyway ellie we've got another question for you like you've experienced a few days in new zealand while you were in australia and you know you went back anyway and that <laughs> is amazing so do you can you tell us more about it and why what kind of experience did um have an impact on you and maybe um we would say in france in french sorry uh as donné le déclic like mm -hmm. can you tell us about it and maybe not even not new zealand necessarily like but all the other things that's a really interesting question i mean again <laughs> of course not surprised um yeah so what I loved about New Zealand uh, or, or my experience was, so, so going to Australia and then New Zealand was the first time I was traveling by myself. So before I was going on a school trip to the US and to China, it was always in a group. It was organized by our school. And I mean, of course you had sometimes moments where when you were in the family, you were by yourself, or, but 
the, the trip to Australia and New Zealand was um, really my initiative. So it, as part of our school, we had the opportunity to, uh, we had a program uh, that, I mean, partnerships with other schools across the world. And you could, uh, during the summer or even during the school year, you could make contact with those schools and ask to do a student exchange. And if they had students that also wanted to, well, that works out perfectly. Um, so actually I didn't go to Australia by myself. I went with uh, one of my best friends, Claire. Um, Hi. So really the- If you're the listening to it. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Claire. Uh, so, so we kind of planned that together and it was amazing. But, um, and after that, I decided to go to New Zealand because, you know, it's not every day that you're on that side of the world. And I was like, you know, might as well. And that was the first time I really found, found myself, you know, alone, uh, traveling. Um, and I loved it. Um, I don't think sometimes when you travel, you're like with family or friends and, uh, this time I was in control of where I wanted to go, uh, what I wanted to visit. I was in control of my day. So I was living with my uncle, but um, him and his family were working uh, except on the weekends. Uh, so during the day, I basically had uh, what we say in French, carte blanche. Uh, so, <laughs> like, um, what, I was uh, completely free. Yeah, I don't know what you wanted to say. No, no, because when you say carte blanche, I was like, it's like, um, when you can do everything you want, free like pass. basically, yeah, free pass. Yeah, um, and and when you ask the the, the click, what what did, what did that bring to you? Um, kind of that confidence to say, well, I want to do this. Well, I didn't tell anyone, but it was you know me. You didn't like, tell I'm anyone. Gonna... Well, no, we're I mean, going I, to I, New Zealand. I, yes, I, yes, I did tell people. <laughs> But I mean, I didn't tell, you know, people where, what I was doing on, on my, my daily planning, it was, mm. but it's more, it was more me to myself, like relating back to what we we're talking about, personal growth. Personal growth, it yeah. Was, it was, you know, uh, you're not following someone else's plan, Yeah. but you're doing, okay, so, and it's, it's, it seems really insignificant, but I think it, it does have a real impact because you're like, okay, so what, what am I going to do today? And, um... I didn't want to regret any of like, you know, being in New Zealand and staying all day in my room because then, yeah. So it was, you know, if I regret, it's up to me, it's my fault. And if I don't want to have a great time, you know. So I'm trying to, it's really interesting that we talk about this because I think particularly now in the pandemic where, you know, it's getting hard uh, and every day kind of looks a bit like the other one to, to be like, kind of try and have this mentality of like, it's up to me and um you know yeah decide you can decide what you can do so just as an example one day i did a one day trip um i took a boat oh. um to uh, a volcano island a volcanic island and i climbed the volcano and i stayed there like all afternoon and i caught the very last boat uh to go back and i would not exaggerate if i said that that was one of the best days of my life yeah um, so yeah that was an interesting answer and I think I have the same question for Leslie because um, I know that you want to travel solo around the world and why do you think traveling solo is more benefit to your personal growth than doing a two-person trip or you know even more person trip so yeah tell me uh, tell us sorry about it and yeah um so I've always liked, uh, you know, doing things uh, that I that I've never did uh, done that I've never did or done. It's okay, people understand. <laughs> and um, so I think, like, when you travel uh, alone, you learn about yourself and when you travel with people even just one or two person it's more difficult because like you've oh you always find an excuse to to not learning about yourself and it's really complicated because you have to do activities that everyone enjoy so 
Yeah, I think it's complicated. But the reason I want to travel alone is because I want to... It's complicated to... Sorry. (laughs) It's complicated to explain, but I want to, like, learn um, about myself to know what I want to be, not for the rest of my life, but for a young adult. Hmm. Yeah. Like, I want to travel solo, but um, I think if I want to move to a country, like, not move to, you know, move, but, (laughs) for example, I need to do... A first trip with someone and then I can go alone in it yeah. in the country because otherwise I will be uh, not like scared yes but um, also uncomfortable you know because I don't know how people are gonna react or something like that so yeah maybe I think everyone needs needs to experience one time mm-hmm. a solo experience to discover their inner self and like yeah know their what they want to do who they want to be so yeah Mm. also what experiences made Ellie what made what experiences made you feel like you you have grown and when did you realize it Mm. tricky question (laughs) Um, so an experience that makes me realize I have grown yeah and the second part of the question and when did you realize it so I think uh when I sometimes discuss with people or talk uh that's when because of like we're doing now it leads me to reflect on things and actually think oh well actually here I I, I have grown I mean it might not shine through in the conversation but maybe after I like think back on it and I think that's why doing those kind of conversations like we're doing now is super useful because by talking you realize things um, and I think there might be a bit of psychology in there that that's why you know you know yeah you can't really explain it you to, to, mm. to, to talk but like by talking by exteriorizing things um, you sometimes you, you you come across an idea and you're like oh interesting and because sometimes if you think about it in your head uh, you know it doesn't come out that clearly or it doesn't I don't know if I'm making sense. Yeah, you uh, don't but this worry. Is a bit of an, it's a bit of an abstract answer, I guess. Um, but it's true uh, that sometimes when, um, even, even now at university, uh, I am realizing that I have become more confident uh, in discussing my ideas. It's not perfect. And I think linking back to personal growth, it's not like, a constant improvement yeah. like you're not you know it's just like that idea of development of growth you know you're not gonna it's kind of going back and forth and, and yeah. it's okay and it's kind of I think it's what both of you said when you were talking about your definition of personal growth it's like not a constant growth but um but um yeah I, I think I have realized uh that I have become more confident um because of those experiences all right okay and i had also and i have sorry also a question um what are you planning for the future uh, who which gonna help you to to grow yeah to grow <laughs> um so related to traveling or maybe just in general in general uh, yeah um so okay so I actually will start with a project that is related to traveling because uh, (laughs) I am hoping because I I think especially after this uh like the pandemic I think uh it will be a good thing for everyone um so I have this project hopefully of going back to China um because it's been a while already and I would like to keep really working on my Mandarin, but it's kind of hard to really, uh, particularly in terms of speaking. Um, mm. I think you make a lot of progress when you're in like a constant environment. Exactly. Uh, and, and, and also, um, so it might, it, it is very likely that it will be 
by myself this time. Um, but I think I'm quite curious of what will happen when I'm confronted to, uh, well, again, this massively different culture that is the Chinese culture. Um, and it will kind of force a challenge myself to get out of my shell. And, you know, if I like, I don't know, need food or something, I will have to talk. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> I'm thinking, you know, this might be the hard way, but the best way. Um, it won't be for very long, but I'm thinking hopefully maybe this summer. Um, hopefully, we hope to for you. Yeah. So so that's like an immediate project. Uh, well, immediate kind of uh, medium mm. term. Yeah. Um, yeah. What about you? What about Alex? Alex? Me? Alex. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> well, actually, it was, le- it was back to you, Leslie. But, um, oh, I, okay. Okay. <laughs> like, anyway, what, is, what is the question? Oh, uh, you know, do you have a, a project um, or uh, well, it was basically Leslie's question, Okay, you know, so, for uh, personal growth? I think starting this podcast was a big step in my personal growth, especially yeah. with you, Leslie, because we've been talking about this for a long time. And um, I think by like speaking to people of what I'm thinking, what I'm feeling is really making me grow because in my everyday life I don't have like I don't really express what I what I feel or what I think really about about yeah. or you know, in, a, in a school way I think yeah yeah for example like I talk to people you know but I don't really I don't get deep you know and I yeah. want to I want to get deep with everyone but you know it is impossible so I think by sharing this podcast all over the world is really making me grow. And I'm planning on, you know, working on myself because sometimes I'm not confident at all because I'm a human being, you know, and (laughs) I tend to really think about what other people will think. And that is not the, the good way to improve yourself. And I know it, but I can't help myself to think about what people will think about what I'm doing, you know? So, yeah. And also the fact that we shared this podcast because at first I was like so shy. I was like, no, yeah. I don't want to... told me. I don't want to share this podcast with my friends because I don't know what they will think about my opinion, what I'm talking about in it. And now then that I did share a little bit of, you know, who I am, I'm I'm more confident and I think in the long term this will be benefit to my to to shaping the human the human I am today or the human I will be you know and also as you said Ellie talking to people is a really good thing to realize what you achieved and what you need to improve and you know uh, it's going to be cliche, you know, but you, like Ellie, are a big inspiration in my everyday life because, you know, you did travel all around the world. You, you know, like, I don't know, guys, but <laughs> when you have that friend, you, she's constantly supporting what I'm doing. She's constantly, like, pushing myself to do things just as Leslie is doing because Leslie is also a big friend in my life. So, yeah, talking and expressing is what is making me grow right now. Oh, <laughs> oh, <Aww. laughs> that was Sorry, deep, I'm you know. Sure. I think this podcast too helped a lot because, well, it's in English, so it's obviously more difficult because you know you kind of shamed off your accent and stressed about doing. Um, mistakes mistakes thank you <laughs> yeah so I think every each and every one of us uh, wants to improve and yeah of course Ellie do you yeah. have any question to ask uh, our listeners or us I don't know maybe um, people want to have advices like what would be your advice to our listeners regarding personal growth growth, yeah because maybe some of us cannot like um reflect on your experiences i don't know and maybe you know people 
I don't know, I've never been to other countries or they're stuck at home. So And and I also want to add that uh, you don't have to uh, travel to yeah. reflect on you know, yourself. You know, you can just uh, do things in your bedroom to just improve. And thanks to uh, social media or internet, you can really improve faster than before. Yeah, you don't need... Like, as you said, to travel, even social media, you don't need to have so yeah. so social media yeah. to improve your personal growth and yourself. So, yeah, Ellie, what would be your answer about that and advice? Um, actually, you guys quite summed up um, <laughs> my thoughts in a bit. Um, no, because I, I was, so to be honest, the very first thing that came to mind that I should apply to myself uh, and it's going to sound academic. I, I hope it doesn't come across this way. But I, you know, one of the things is like you know, read, um, and but it doesn't have to be you know, read or listen to podcasts or listen to things or watch, you know, movies or whatever content you like. And I think um, whatever you want to achieve, whether it's like I don't know, learning a new skill or have a dream, like accomplish a dream or something. Um, like you have to find things that it's going to sound cliche but like like find a way to do it that you really like so if you take the example of learning a language I mean I feel like Alex you're going to be really familiar with it because you do it and it's so inspiring but like like look for content that you like like listen to content that you like read you know go on social media uh and um, personally for improving my language it's been really helpful but I feel like you could do this with anything um, so so yeah that would kind of be my advice <laughs> all right that that is a good advice we do not have any question for Ellie or no if you have oh, any question yeah. for uh, Elisa you can you know hashtag thing uh, WUD or just leave a um, comment on yeah. our IG because yeah guys we need to tell oh. you that this um I don't know when this podcast is going to be up but we did made an Instagram for uh this podcast so it is what's up dude pod um is going to be in the description of the the episode so yeah and do not be afraid to share it and yeah because that is the only way and you can you can send a message also yeah you... yeah yeah so a voice message on Anchor. A on even, or even on Instagram. IG, you know? yeah. A direct message. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Private message. Pri yeah. Because, <laughs> because I was like, well, what is the world in English? Because I only know the like, Instagram in French. So, yeah. Thank you, Elisa, for being yeah, thank in you. this podcast. You are so thank inspiring. And I, and I think you did inspire a lot of people here. Hopefully, but you did inspire us, so that's, that's a good thing. Your questions were super inspiring and got me to think, so thank you for that. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we're going to end this podcast. Again, thank you. Uh, and I don't know how to end this one. You okay. just take Until care. Until next time. Yeah, and okay. take care and... Have a good day and all night. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Bye bye, Cheers. guys. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> bye.